Hey everybody, uh, now that we're fairly close to having something to report, uh, I hope, <laughs> I thought I'd uh, do a quick run through of uh, how we're doing this now. The fuser is about 30, 40 yards that way in another building. Uh, this is where we're doing remote control from. <clears throat> and it probably pays to pay a little attention to how we're doing this. Uh, this panel down here is all hardwired, uh, buried telco twisted pair of cable, completely non-dependent on computers for reasons we might see here later when things crash due to EMP. We have relays that um, let us turn various power supplies on and off, interlocks, all that kind of crap, um, indicator lights for what's on. Uh, speakers! We have a good blue Yeti stereo microphone over there feeding us direct line level audio regardless of whether the USB recording is working or not. Which uh, is one of the things we put in the database. Now up here is a picture of what's on our scope. People who are familiar with this setup will realize that I have slowed down the sweep speed because we're more interested right now in seeing sort of the big picture than the details of waveforms. The big black square up there is another uh, camera, and both of those are, by the way, Raspberry Pi's, um, showing the inside of the tank, which is dark, because it's nothing's going on. Okay, over here, this is a thing that allows me to set some of the scope stuff, like the sweep speed and the vertical gain and all that baloney. Uh, from here, it's a Pearl program with the GTK3. Uh, this little guy is the UI for the plot programs. These are GNU plot. This is all Linux. This is GNU plot, also a little Perl front end. That's running here. This is running here, but it's talking to the scope over Ethernet. This is VNC uh, desktop from another pod that's over the fuser, um, which we call fuser pod for some strange reason. And there it is. It has a display on it, but it's timed out. And just above that is um, the big Spellman power supply that is our main power, which I can turn on from here. Click. Lights come on. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Um, if you listen carefully, you can hear the fans go on or maybe off. All you got to do is slap this sucker and the world is off. Very important. Sometimes this stuff goes crazy and... Uh, we're still working on tightening it up, and that's what all the screen wire is here, and copper tape, and all other baloney. Um, so this is right now showing a plot of a previous run, which is actually sort of a failure, except that, okay, these green guys, I don't know if you can see them, these are, uh, roughly this line here is a million neutrons a second at the bottom here, and we're getting up to, I don't know, six or seven million neutrons a second here. The purple line is an average of this, and what you can't probably see is up here where my finger is, we hit uh, 3 billion, <laughs> a couple times of that run, four times actually right here, boom, 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 um, and it crashed, and the computer crashed, that's why the data goes all the way to the end, normally you can see where we shut things off. So we're, this is uh, red is Geiger's, green and purple are neutrons. Over on this thing is uh, plots of the various high voltage supplies. We have two grids and we play around with the interaction between them. <clears throat> so that's voltage and current for both of those. And this is the tank pressure. Now um, I'm going to start a run. And um, let's say this is just a shakedown. So I'll, hey, you know, human being input is important too. Uh, for YouTube. Okay, and we're going to start data acquisition without which we can't see what's going on um, in the plot. Um, so we want to get the latest run, which is now number 82, and not do our crash protection stuff, and plot, which is going to make all those things show up in the wrong place again here on the screen, so we'll move them. Um, and pressure, which is really, really low because it's been on the uh, well pump down for a long time now, a few days. 
uh, let's see if I can get this all important radiation and uh, not detector going on. Now we get some hits from cosmic rays and background radiation. So these red guys here in the middle, it's kind of our normal background count. It's actually a little lower than normal, which is wonderful. Um, you get an occasional neutron count from cosmic rays. So the first thing we have to do to make this go is first of all tell it how long our gas inlet solenoid is supposed to be open for when we click it and start letting in some gas. So let's let some gas in and as I do this we'll see this thing which suddenly rescaled. It's a log plot. Uh, we'll probably hear the, the uh, four pump start up due to increased current from the turbo pump and it'll take a little while to happen. Uh, we're pretty close to something that should be uh, reasonable, about 0.02 millibars, roughly. Okay, so let's try this with some uh, high voltage and see if we can get... Um, I heard that fan come on, I don't know if you can. The safety interlock I also just turned on. And let's start the high voltage. And it says we've got high voltage. And lo and behold, this plot over here started coming up. And we must not have enough gas because we're not drawing any current. Nothing's happening, so let's add some more gas. Oh! Now you can see the grid lighting up over here. Some sparkles from x-rays. The other grid is near this blue glow, but it's not lighting up right now. And this is just running in standard form for fuser mode. This is our neutron detector. And we're right on the edge of where... <laughs> Passion's Law lets us run. So actually this is a good demo. Let's see if we crash again. Turn on the ion grid. Now this grid down here is glowing. It's in a bigger space. And you will also see its voltage come up. And our main voltage goes down. Because now we have too much gas for that. Um, we're actually making more neutrons than before. Which is one of the reasons we're playing this game. Um, Let's uh, set a lower ion grid voltage to see if we can tune this around a little bit. And that uh, quit. So let's just start bringing it up. Notice we're seeing some stuff here. That's uh, we're logging every action the operator takes, which is my, my dumb cell. And we're seeing the currents of these power supplies come up down here. And what I'm trying to do is get as close as I can to the arbitrary current limit I've set over there manually without actually lowering the voltage because if we use the neutron output ability, you'll notice that our little sort of middle burst there was the biggest one so far. Not as far. And I might need to let in a little bit more gas, but I haven't hit current limit on some of this yet. So let's just see how good we can do. Yeah, now we're starting to go up there again. I'm turning up the voltage on the ion grid here with clicks to make more ions for this main grid, which I'm sure you can barely see if you can see it at all, uh, to work with. Seems to work better. The less dense we can have the gas, the better it seems to work. You lose less by scattering. On the other hand, it looks like we just don't have enough. So we'll let in some more. Which will make it too much, and then we'll let some out and try to get it adjusted right. So, out we go. In we go, actually. And do we hit current one on the main guy? Yes. But not too hard. So we didn't actually uh, cause this voltage to go down here. Uh, so it's not hard and hard current on it. And here we are running, and nothing special is going on here in terms of our RF modes or anything like that. Okay, the bottom trace is our Horniac detector, very high-speed neutron detector. Uh, the middle trace is EMI, uh, basically capacity coupled from the main grid. The blue trace here is DC coupled Faraday from the back of the tank near the main grid, and it's down some volts. Uh, Faraday front from the ion grid. The Yellow trace or green trace, depending on what the color rendition is. <laughs> At the top here is um, noise on the ion grid. And this appears to be running perfectly stably 
um, well, more or less perfectly stable. The, the, it's normal, by the way, for our output to go down as deuterium is ejected from the tank wall. I think it was colder than when I started this. And I'm sure it's getting hot now because we're putting in, I don't know, 3, 400 watts. But, okay, so this is a shakedown. For once, nothing crashed. Now, if I want to kill this instantly, it's dead. Okay? This is wonderful. And it doesn't matter whether the computers are working or not. We just completely override this uh, with that. Now, I'm going to say stop acquisition over here. And it's saying, oh, I'm turning everything off, which is wonderful. And I'll say, uh, spell it right, shake down, complete, uh, long feedback phase, which I knew already, but might as well keep good notes. Now I will say, save this post run comment, because we want that in the database, along with all this other good stuff. And, um, commit the external files. Now what that is doing is via Samba going over to these cameras, these top two, not this one, we don't bother with it, it's just sort of for my comfort, um, and copying their files um, or hopefully that's what it's doing. <laughs> it's not, I'm, this is why we do shakedowns, right? I've got something else to, uh, to figure out how to fix. Um, so, this is already sort of too long, but this is um, what we're up to these days, and hopefully we will have some great results to report for you. We've got a couple other things to mess around with in the last up uh, that will affect our results, but uh, we're already sort of setting records for the amateur fuser community, even with this crap. So, it's a uh, pretty happy guy. This is pretty wonderful. So, all for now. Live long and prosper.